Hey there viewers, Eric O here at Self Main Auto. We've got another repair video today, and I forgot my hat. I'm not real happy about it, but I did find this one in my locker and my stash of miscellaneous hats, so it'll have to do because anything's better than having cold, wet salt water running down your head. So we've got to put front brakes on this. It's a pretty simple task, but uh, maybe there's some of you out there who haven't done it or you've got one of these trucks and you're thinking about doing it yourself. So I'll bring you along. We'll do a quick short tour on how to replace your pads and rotors on your 09 GMC half ton. You can just turn your wheel here so you can work on this a little easier. First thing you gotta do is just pull the caliper off. It takes a 19 millimeter. Should be just a couple bolts there. And then you should be able to just pull your caliper off just like that. So you know, slide right off there for you. Sometimes you gotta stick a little bar underneath them, you know, down here and give them a little pull. Um, then here looks like an 18 millimeter. That's what they are. So just set your caliper aside, don't let that hang by the hose. And we'll just pull the bracket off. These factory bolts have a little bit of Loctite on them. Pull the upper one off. So yeah, if you're wrenching those out, they'll probably come out pretty tight. Then just pull your whole bracket right straight off. And then straighten your wheel back up. If your rotors have never been off, there's going to be a bolt or yeah, a bolt in there. It takes a T30 Torx bit. You're going to need to pull that off. Now, if it's anything like this uh, rotor here, it's going to be seized on the hub. So you just take a hammer and you can hit it right in between the studs and that should bust it loose. And pull it right off. So this is one of the main reasons we're, we change brakes on a lot of these Chevy trucks. This thing's only got, I think, 30... Maybe 32,000, 34,000 miles on it, but uh, yeah, the insides of these rotors, they just uh, they just don't like the salt. So these things rust and flake apart, and then uh, what that does ultimately. So this is the uh, this is the outside pad, in pretty good shape, at least well, better than 50 percent. But you can see it's starting to kind of crack and split in half there. But then you compare that to the inside pad here. Which is seized in the holder, you know, and that pad is shot. You know, between being seized up in the seized up in the bracket, and uh, you know, just the roughs or yeah, the rust, and it has what we call rust jacking, where the pad's actually delaminating from the uh, backing plate. So you, know, you can see it's just ground just about down to metal on this on this corner. So yeah, really really common on these Chevys. You can you can get the brake job out of these about once a year. Um, so. Unfortunately, it's one of their downfalls. Next thing we want to do is, well, right here, we just want to push our pistons back in on the caliper. Just before you do that, this thing's pretty new, so we don't have to worry about it much, but if you see any brake fluid leaking around these dust boots, you're going to want to go ahead and change your caliper, or when you go to push this in, if these pistons won't, uh, won't retract easily, uh, you want to go ahead and replace that also. Uh, I have a tool here we use at the shop, specifically made for pushing in brake calipers. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. Usually I just stick the pad in there, but I'm just going to use this bar to make up the space. We just take and push the, push the pistons back in slowly. You probably heard me say in a lot of my other uh, brake videos that there, you know, there's tons and tons of controversy about this, you know, whether or not to open the bleeder. You can do whatever you like. If you want to do it 100% the proper way, open the bleeder. If not, just push it in. Before that, I've done thousands and thousands of brake jobs. I've always pushed them in. I've never ever once had a problem with you know ABS valves or anything of that nature. So use your judgment there, whatever you like to do. If you don't have a caliper piston retraction tool at home, do what everybody else does, or what I did for a lot of years is use vice grips. So on a dual piston setup, you're gonna to want to go ahead and just snap one vice grip on lightly in the center of the piston. Now these are phenolic, basically plastic. So you gotta be careful, you don't want to break them. Clamp and hold one side, push in 
the other side. Once that's in all the way, just hold that with your vice grips and then push in the other piston. So no big deal, really. Another thing you want to kind of have a look at too is, you know, look inside your caliper on this outer part of the uh, brake caliper here. We've got like these three ears that sit against the pad. Make sure there's not a lot of rust buildup on these. Uh, these ones are super clean because the trucks are relatively new. Uh, so there's really nothing to worry about there, but if this had huge amounts of scale, we'd also have to clean that rust out of there too. So just something to look at. Next thing we wanna do before we get too far, before we put our new rotor on, we gotta get all this rust off this hub. Um, you know, that's what makes the rotor seize on there. You can see it's not, not real, real bad. It's just a little bit of surface rust, but uh, at any rate, we gotta do our best to clean that off and uh, get that so we can get a little layer of grease on there and keep that new rotor from sticking. This is one tool I like to use here. It's made by 3, uh, I think 3M makes it. Just goes in your little uh, die grinder. Has these replaceable uh, like cookie wheels that go on it. And all this does is go around a stud and allows us to clean the rust on the back side of the stud, which is uh, usually a difficult task. I have to get everything cleaned off. Like I say, just do the do the best job you can. You'll notice that the rotor actually sits on this very outer part and this very inner part here. So if you don't get the rust, you know, really cleaned out of this, you know, little center portion here, it's not super critical. It just has to be below the depth of this of this step here on that wheel bearing. And if you are going at it with a little, you know, 90 degree die grinder like I was, you know, don't hit it so hard you actually take that step away. I mean, you don't want to throw this thing out of. Uh, parallelism I guess you would call it so um, you don't want your rotor sitting on here cockeyed basically how's that once I've got them cleaned off I usually throw a little layer of muscle grease on there just kind of like a spray anti-seize grease that we use here at the shop you can use you know just a light film of wheel bearing grease or you know if you live where things aren't rusty then don't worry about it next thing we gotta do that's really important is uh, we got to clean outside these brackets and you'll see I mean maybe on yours uh, you know the pads weren't seized up and you know you can just go ahead and lube these put the hardware back on but it's our habit here to uh, take in what I like to do is I, I put them in our sandblast cabinet and I'll blast this area out right here then we'll lube it and we'll stick the hardware on because I've been finding that uh, you know throughout the years what happens is the rust builds up in here and actually squeezes the pad and actually locks the pad right in the holder so we go ahead and sandblast these and get these cleaned out you can use a, a square file, file out that rust, uh, use whatever means you have, but you got to get that rust out of there without removing any of the metal material because you don't want to, you know, change, um, you know, change this uh, spec here, you know, where the hardware and stuff clips on. You don't want it, you know, real loose and your pads, you know, clicking and clanking and making noise on you. The other thing you can do to your bracket is, is take and pull your pins out. Make sure they're lubed. If they need a lube, just put a little bit of light lube on the side of them and go ahead and reinstall them. Uh, you know, check your uh, check your hardware here. Make sure there's no holes in any of the rubbers, um, and uh, you know, make sure the pins move nice and free. These ones here have you know a pretty sufficient amount of lube on them, so I'm not going to do anything with those. But uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do next. So you can see here, we went and got the uh, brackets all cleaned up real nice. Got all the rust and trash out of them there. So I usually just do both of them at the same time. Now, I'll caution you: don't just uh, don't just go at them with a wire brush because usually all a wire brush does is just smooth over the rust. Um, so definitely uh, chip that out of there with a file or something. Um, and then I like to take some just regular brake caliper grease. I'm going to coat this whole this whole spot here that uh, that the brake caliper hardware goes on, and that's going to keep this uh, from rusting up and putting the squeeze on those new pads. So it's not going to stop it completely, but it sure is going to slow down the process and realistically is better than doing nothing. So this has been a, a method I've used for a long, long time and I've had really great results. And, you know, quite typically cars will come back in for their, you know, second brake job and, 
and usually I pull the hardware off and the metal is still good and shiny underneath it. And so then we're just going to go ahead and take our new hardware, which I'd highly recommend that you get. Is uh, always get a you know buy a set of pads that comes with new hardware. Definitely would recommend that. Oops, let me clip them on there. Good. If your pads don't come with new hardware, I'd recommend buying new hardware. Um, definitely would uh, save you a little bit of aggravation and cleaning up the old stuff. And, you know, quite often, really, the old stuff around here is pretty pretty well rusted, pretty well had, but all depends on the environment you live in. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to this one here, and then uh, we'll put the pads in. Let's get, get this job wrapped up. I've got them cleaned up. Now you'll notice on your new pads, the inner one has a solid web across the bottom and your outer one does not, so make sure you don't mix those up. I, I think it's impossible to actually mix them up when you go to put them on, but uh, just keep an eye on that. So go ahead and install our inner pad first. Now these pads should just slip right in there. And what the neat thing is with the new hardware, it has these little, little detents that stick out on it that keep our pad from slipping back off, uh, which is really cool because it has these little, little springs on the inside of the hardware that keep the pads pushed back. But uh, on some, some uh, vehicles, you know, I think the Fords and stuff, they have the spring that go on top of the pads. They can be a real pisser to try to hold everything and get the uh, caliper put back on there. So that's kind of a, a good provision they've uh, adapted on, these, uh, on this hardware. So it definitely makes it a whole lot easier. And uh, keep in mind, too, that you should never, ever have to pound these things in with a hammer or, uh, you know, force fit them by any means. They should always just, always just slip right in. And uh, you can see how this outer pad here has the curve to it, and there's no way that you could actually install the uh, the wrong pad. So not without a little bit of cutting and grinding anyways. So that's that. We're going to go ahead and get our rotor slid back up on there. Like I said, make sure these pads are, are nice and free. They should move super easy. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. So let's get this thing put together. All right, go ahead and pop our rotor up on there. Now we got our hub all cleaned off and greased. We're going to want to stick our uh, Torx bit bolt that we took out. Go ahead and put that back in there. Make sure you torque that to spec. Next thing you're going to want to do, you, you want to clean off your rotor. You want to get that uh, packing grease that they, they put on these to keep them from rusting in the package. You want to get all that off. And you can do this before or after you put it on. You know, a lot of guys will just clean them off in the sink using just like non-dish soap and, and hot water. So e either way works good. So uh, if you do it on the vehicle, and just I usually do it two, three times and make sure I got them good and oil free. And then uh, you want to also do the uh, inside of the rotor uh, way right here. So. A lot of controversy on this one you know the proper way to clean them and, I don't know, this thing's going to go out and go sloshing through the salt and the mud so I don't think it's it's important but I don't think it's as important as some people make it out to be we're going to put our caliper bracket back on now you can take if you choose to put a little bit of uh, you know blue loctite back on these or yellow loctite Give it three months around here, this thing will be rotted on there so bad, locked it really doesn't matter anyways. So we're just gonna go ahead and put these on and uh, snug them up. Make sure you tighten them to factory specs. Next thing you do before you put your caliper on, it's always a good, good practice. I take a little bit of brake caliper grease, put it on the ears of the caliper here, the three ears that stick out. What it's going to do is going to help prevent our pads from uh, from squealing, any kind of metal to metal contact. And it's also going to prevent this from rusting up, um, you know, which is kind of a kind of a problem around here. So we're going to do it there, and then these are phenolic pistons, so it's not as important, but uh, it's just a good habit to get into. We can coat the faces of the piston also uh, with some caliper grease. Go ahead and put our caliper on. Now make sure you don't have your brake hose twisted up. Uh, put a little curly cue in those. What I usually do 
but I'll just get them started. I'll put the, I uh, oh, got a little tension on it because I got the wheel turned too much, but uh, go ahead and put the top bolt in, hold your caliper up, and uh, you can reach through from the back side with, with your middle finger on your right hand, push that pad in, and then do it here on the left side also, and then just let your caliper swing down. That's going to prevent you from making a big old mess with the, with the grease and uh, trying to slide that over and manipulate both bolts at the same time. So I do that on the majority of brake jobs that I do, just put in one bolt, whether it's top or the bottom, and then just hinge it, hinge it on, keeps things kind of clean. So and there's the phone again. <laughs> so all right, I'm going to torque these to factory specs. So you can see that it's pretty simple. Kind of got to use your mind a little bit, you know, don't saturate your pads and stuff with grease and clean your rotor off, clean the rust off, make sure everything moves good and free. Uh, make sure your pins are lubricated, lubricate your hardware and replace that. Use a good quality pad and, and uh, you know, pretty pretty simple. Like I say, it might get a little, little kicked back because of, uh, you know, not opening the bleeder and stuff, but let me show you what that looks like. So this is a 2009. Let me get a light over here. So... I mean, granted, you know anybody in this business knows that we can, yeah, we can, we can get that bleeder out. But uh, fact of the matter is, you know, you're not going to put a socket on it anymore. This thing's got just a smidge over thirty thousand miles on it. Bleeder's almost completely rotted off. But you know, that's why I choose to to do them the way I do, as far as uh, you know, not opening the bleeder and just pushing the pistons in. And you know, perhaps you don't like the way we clean the rotors, but. I don't know. It, it all works. There's there's a zillion different ways to do things, and some are right and some are wrong. But um. that's it, viewers. I'm gonna wrap it up. I got a busy day today and got to get some things done. But uh, definitely wanted to give you a little little bit of a video for today. And I know it's pretty simple and it's another brake job, but. Uh, perhaps it's going to help somebody out there when they're working on there. I think this will probably apply to 07 up Chevy pickups and uh, you know maybe get them out of a jam or kind of show them what they're getting into or show them how simple the job really is and you can definitely do it yourself. So thanks for watching. Leave any comments, criticisms, questions below. Check us out on Facebook and like us there. We appreciate that. And as always viewers remember if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.